happy little toys. When it comes to comics, it seems as if every other week there was some earth-shattering event that would shake the foundation to its very core. At least until the next one. Whether it was a crisis of some sort, Superman getting killed, or the creation and destruction of Marvel's Ultimate Universe, there was one major event that started it all, and that was titled Marvel Superhero Secret Wars, or just Secret Wars for short. We are not just talking about the 12 issue miniseries, but also the extremely cool toy line from Mattel. What does DC Comics have to do with the creation of this toy line? What major supervillain was inadvertently created in this series? So refill your web shooters and get ready to swing because this is the history of Mattel's Secret Wars toy line. The year is 1983 and toy manufacturer Kenner has been granted the master toy license for items based on the various DC Comics properties. Kenner had been around since 1946 and had some successful toys released in that time such as the Easy Bake Oven, the Spirograph, and of course, Star Wars. Thanks to their extremely successful Star Wars license, Kenner had become one of the biggest toy companies in the world. They were able to snag the DC license away from Mego, who had it for both DC and Marvel since the early 70s for their line of world's greatest superheroes toys. Mattel was the other heavy hitter on the block, having gotten their start in 1945. Mattel released such classics over the years as the Magic 8-Ball, which my ex-wife used to do two or three times a week, but somehow it didn't seem quite so magical. Barbie, Hot Wheels, and He-Man, among others. The He-Man property in particular was selling extremely well, with some reports having it outselling Star Wars toys. After learning that Kenner was granted the Master DC license, Mattel didn't want to be left holding the bag when it came to superhero toys just in case they were the next big thing. The only other company in town was Marvel, so Mattel came a-knockin'. Mattel had wanted to work with Marvel and create a series of figures for little boys and possibly little girls everywhere. The problem, according to them, was brand recognition. People were well aware of Spider-Man and the Hulk thanks to the popular 1970s live-action TV shows. But the characters of the Fantastic Four or Iron Man? Most people didn't have a clue. According to Jim Shooter, who was the editor-in-chief at Marvel at the time, Mattel had a few demands when it came to creating this line. First off, the words secret and war should be somewhere in the title because they tested positively in focus groups. Doctor Doom would need to be one of the major bad guys of the series. Mattel also felt that Doctor Doom was looking a little too medieval so they upgraded his armor to make it more high tech. They did the same thing for Tony Stark's Iron Man suit as well. In addition to the upgraded armor designs, Mattel also wanted a new fortress, vehicles, and playsets because the price point would be higher with additional play value added. They also requested a comic book to promote the figures and playsets. Mr. Shooter had said that they already published comic books every month and what better way to promote the toys than in these books themselves. Mattel had also wanted to introduce several new female characters such as a new Spider-Woman, Titania and Volcana. As far as the new book goes, they wanted the name Secret Wars in the title to help promote the toy line. They were not backing down on these stipulations either. After these messages, we'll be right back. Secret Wars. Marvel supervillains are coming. Secret Wars. Can the Marvel superheroes stop them? Marvel supervillains and superheroes figures, each sold separately. Here, Doctor Doom and the Doom Platoon. Magneto, Doctor Octopus. There, Captain America and the Champions of Freedom. Spider-Man and Wolverine. Secret Wars. The secret's out. Doctor Doom and Spider-Man. The Marvel Secret Wars collection. Other figures, each sold separately. From Mattel. 
Mr. Shooter had decided to write the series himself, taking inspiration from an earlier title they had published in 1982, entitled Marvel Superheroes Contest of Champions, which was Marvel's first limited series and crossover. Unlike Secret Wars, though, this was only three issues and had a far more limited roster of heroes and villains. The plot of Secret Wars sees a cosmic entity called the Beyonder, who was enthralled by superheroes and villains on the planet Earth. He transports these characters against their will to a planet of his own creation called Battleworld, which has been stocked with alien technology and weapons. He tells each team that if they slay their respective enemies, that all that their hearts desire will be theirs. The series did end up changing a few things, such as Spider-Man getting a cool new black costume which would later be turned into Venom. By the way, the initial concept for Spider-Man's black costume included a red spider and not a white one. A new Spider-Woman was introduced, and Ben Grimm, otherwise known as The Thing, now has the ability to transform back into human form. He decides to leave the Fantastic Four and stay on Battleworld, being replaced by She-Hulk. As far as those new female characters that Mattel insisted upon, they weren't even made into figures. Secret Wars! I, Doctor Doom, will track Captain America in my Tower of Doom! Spider-Man, Tower of Doom, and Doctor Doom versus Captain America said each sold separately. You put the tower together. How shall I trap him, Secret Shield? Ah, with the Doom Slammer. So this is the Tower of Doom. Welcome, Captain. Get me out now, Spider-Man. Tower of Doom from the Marvel Superhero Secret Wars collection. Doctor Doom versus Captain America said in Spider-Man figure each sold. Speaking of the figures, Roger Sweet, who was in charge of the Masters of the Universe line, was also put in charge of the Secret Wars action figure line. Mattel had initially set out for the DC license but lost out to Kenner Toys even though they were a smaller company. According to Mr. Sweet, the Secret Wars line was viewed as a flanker brand in relation to He-Man. In other words, it was considered a secondary brand for boys to pick up without cutting into He-Man's overall sales. This is why the figures were smaller and not as muscular as the Masters of the Universe line. This was done to not only save on production costs, but be a lesser product when compared with He-Man. This also explains why such a small company like Kenner Toys won the DC license over Mattel, because they were willing to put in more money and effort into their figures. Each figure in the Secret Wars line measured at just a bit over 4 inches, and we received eight of them in the first series. We received two versions of Wolverine, one with Black Claws and one with Silver Claws, Captain America, Iron Man, Spider-Man, Dr. Octopus, Dr. Doom, Kang, and Magneto. Each character came with a lenticular shield with the superheroes having a round design and the villains having a square design. You can swap these lenticular slides out with different ones creating a whole new scene. Most characters also came with some sort of accessory such as a laser gun. I never knew Iron Man needed a laser gun but apparently he does. Overall the costumes were pretty comic accurate although I never really cared for Doctor Doom's high tech armor. He is also missing his trademark cape but it's still cool that we finally have characters a lot of which were never made into toys before. Each character included a short biography including a four panel comic strip. Since sales were not as strong as Mattel had hoped, Series 2 only had five figures which included Baron Zemo, Hobgoblin, Daredevil, Falcon, and Spider-Man in his new black suit. The second wave received much better sculpting and attention to detail than the first wave including Daredevil who now has his billy club instead of a laser gun. Falcon has his faithful sidekick Redwing, and Hobgoblin has his Goblin Glider. According to Mr. Sweet, when designing the toy line, they didn't really reference the Secret Wars comic when it came to choosing which figures went in the line. For example, Daredevil, Baron Zemo, and Hobgoblin were not in the actual Secret Wars comic. With production already winding down during the beginning of Wave 2, only three more figures were released in the line. These included even more baffling choices such as Electro, 
Iceman, and Constrictor. Again, none of these appeared in the actual Secret Wars comic. Due to the limited supply available, they were only released in Europe and are the most valuable when it comes to the series. More figures were planned for Season 3, and thanks to the website ActionFigureInsider.com, we have a look at the artwork that was done for the lenticular shields of the characters. These figures would have included the very first female figure in the line, which was Dazzler. Of all the choices for a female superhero who wasn't even in the actual comic book, we would have gotten Dazzler. Here's an idea. How about Spider-Woman? How about Jean Grey? Or how about the character Mattel requested be created, who is the large and in charge Big Titania? Oh, I'm sorry. I was looking at her picture when I said that. It's pronounced Titania. My bad. Heck, even Ellie Mae Clampett would have been a better choice than Dazzler. Other figures would have included Mr. Fantastic, Abomination, Annihilus, Thunderbolt, the Incredible Hulk, and Mystique. One interesting piece of trivia is that this was one of Bruce Timm's earliest examples of actual superhero art, although he had been illustrating the Masters of the Universe toy pack in comics. Bruce Timm would go on to create the legendary Batman the Animated Series. We also received a number of vehicles which included the Doom Cycle, Captain America's Turbo Cycle, the Doom Copter, Captain America's Turbo Copter, the Doom Star, the Doom Roller, and the Star Dart. A couple of playsets were released including the Freedom Fighter and Doctor Doom's Tower of Doom. As I mentioned, the line sold moderately well but not enough to justify its ongoing existence. Over the years, toy companies have produced their own versions of the Secret Wars toys and some of them are pretty cool. Toy Biz released a box set of 8 figures in 1998, and recently Gentle Giant released a series of figures both in jumbo scale and small scale. To date, there hasn't been any video games released on the subject, but it was adapted to a three-part episode in the Spider-Man animated series. Even though it wasn't a straight-up adaptation and some liberties were taken, it is still Secret Wars only in animated form. They did a pretty good job, although the roster was slimmed down from the comic. For a series that only had moderate appeal when it was released, it has stood the test of time. While the collector market isn't as crazy for these figures as Kenner's superpowers, there is still a large fan base and the value of these figures keep going up. Did you ever have these figures growing up? Let me know in the comments down below. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to like share, comment, and subscribe. I'm still building this channel up, so anything you could do, I would appreciate. Also, if you'd like to support me on Patreon, please click the link below. Thanks, everybody, for watching.